Australians then come here to Hull tonight looking to set up a new record. They've won their first 11 matches on this tour, amassing an incredible 332 points. And if they win tonight, well, it'll be the most successful start ever by a kangaroo touring team. The Australian side is virtually that expected to appear in the second test at Wigan on Saturday. And the Australians one change in fact from the first test would only be in the substitutes Wally Lewis and Ray Brown taking the 14 and 15 shirts and for Mal Meninga it's a memorable return perhaps to Hull he started the tour here with a try and seven goals in the first game he also got a try and eight goals in the first test at Boothbury Park this Hull side is of course the one which took the Challenge Cup final in a replay at Ellen Road last May and they currently lead the Slalom Lager Championship First Division. They've got everything on their plates tonight. Steve Rogers the kick-off and the ball picked up on that far side by Denahara. It's not just a suspicion of a knock-on but uh, now Keith Bridges at the play the ball. Experienced hooker of course uh, from Featherston Rovers and Bradford Northern. Hull in possession again, Bridges the first man and coming up there was Lee Crooks. Surprising to see Lee Crooks in the whole side tonight because only yesterday he was declared unfit to continue with the great the squad. Lovely kick through. And very good play indeed by the whole forward Mick Crane. And the first penalty of the night going against the Australians as it has done so often on this tour. Intelligent football that by Mick Crane, the kick through and as we've said so many times on this tour, you have to kick against these kangaroos. Paul Prenderville's boot puts the ball safely into touch out of the ground, in fact. And so it's Hull in the ascendancy. First minute of the game. Dean. The first willing workhorse coming through there it was Paul Rose, formerly of Hulkingston Rovers, across the way. This is Mick Harrison driving in and falling to the tackle. Looking for top as it came the other way. Crane's in the thick of it again. Oh, if that pass had been collected there by Lee Crooks, that could have been trouble for the Australian defence. But the ball is now in the hands of Eric Groth. An Australian wingman very keen to get in on the action. Peter Sterling. And that's going to be a penalty kick offside there. And the offender was James Luloy, the Kiwi. Greg Brentnell left-footed, we'll try and find a touch here. And that is not a good kick, Prenderville's underneath it, so is Evans, he takes it. Harry Campbell, what a good run. Falling in the end to the tackle by Max Krillich, the Aussie captain. A lively enough start by the English Cup holders. sort something out, the touch judges are on already and once more it's Les Boyd Les Boyd who was sent up of course over the way at Hulkingston Rovers in the first match of the tour has now been the offender once more, Dean good play this, once more Crane who's having a superb start to this match if they think of it so this is Bright from home, Brooks offended by Les Boyd and by Craig Young. And once more, not allowing Crooks to get up in the tackle, and Young concedes the penalty. And Lee Crooks wants to have a pot at goal. David Topless. Directing operation says put it into touch. Paul well, Prenderville does it better than uh, Greg Brentnell did for Australia. We're in the action again. And it's Paul Rose, better known as a second row forward, but now playing as a prop for Hull. Who picks it up. Back inside for McHarrison. Who's back on Humberside after a spell with Leeds. And some of the surprise inclusion. Oh, the little kick through almost worked. It's come back to Tony Dean and six more tackles. So that's helpful. 
Pitch it through. Oh, it's fallen on all the Australians. I was just going to say there about uh, Nick Harrison's surprise selection. That's due to the fact that Trevor Skerritt has been ruled out through injury and is also a doubtful starter for the second test. The crowd in good heart and tying a few kangaroos down. But, uh, Hull will certainly earn the acclaim of the whole of the Rugby League in this country if they can tie the Aussies down. Growth playing it to himself and then trying to burst down through the middle. It took three black and white hoop shirts to deny him. Krilich will be uh, acting half back. And good close spotting by Hull there. They were very quickly and the penalty given away though. So that's the first penalty, in fact, uh, of the night to the Australians. Oh, they've already had uh, two or three. And a very big crowd here at the boulevard. Hull oh, really is uh, known as the cradle, the home of rugby league in this country at the moment. There is no better supported club than Hull. Krilich who was injured there and uh, the trainer having done all the stuff goes off again so Krilich is alright ball hoofed into touch so the Australians really for the first time getting inside Hull's half Six minutes on the clock, and Eric Groth is uh, really willing for the action tonight, coming inside there. But the ball has gone outside this time to Les Boyd. Les Boyd, the only one of this team, in fact, who played on Sunday at Fulham. Another penalty given there against Keith Bridges. Les Boyd uh, played at Fulham on Sunday and had stitches inserted in a leg injury. He told me it was the first time he'd ever had stitches in his life, which I find very hard to believe for a rugby league forward. So the first opportunity for points to go on the board. And it's Al Meninga who's already scored five tries and kicked 34 goals on this tour. He looks to add to that impressive tally. Meninga kicked. Seven goals here at Cravel Park against Hull Kingston Rovers. He kicked eight here at Boothbury Park, so he's completing a hat-trick of Hull Sporting Arenas tonight. And if he can uh, have an equally impressive goal tally, there's the kick on its way. Watch out for the flags. They stay down. The Hull fans cheer. Fielded brilliantly by Kerry Boosted, who's off. What a sprinter and what a good tackle on him. By Mick Crane once more. What an inspired start Crane has had. It was Topless helping him out. The tackle was missed there. And Bridge is going in very hard indeed. Referee John Holdsworth from Leeds. So nothing wrong. And the flag's up once more. A little bit of... Uh, off the ball stuff, I think, on that far side of the pitch. And for the second time, the referee having to cool things down. And it's Steve Evans that he's having a word with. It was a foul on Malvin Inga, so the penalty going to Australia. And this time they'll certainly go for touch. With Greg Brentley. Nothing wrong with that except that we've lost another ball. So here comes Eric Groth once more. Very keen on playing the ball to himself and uh, setting off tonight in his formidable tracks. Krilich, good a good pass that was. And coming through on the burst was Wayne Pierce. 
Sterling. First time I've really seen him. Kenny, nice passing. Rogers trying to make the break. Uh, and Dinger is held on that touchline. Meninga wearing four as opposed to three tonight. With Steve Rogers switching shirts. I think that was just a fool of the cameraman. Krilic, Young's kick through is an excellent tactical kicker as Craig Young, but uh, on that occasion he got it all wrong. Well, they're lapping it up, they really are. A big crowd here then at the boulevard and holds supporters in very good voice. Did too. But he's had a particularly good start to this match. Harrison doing well to keep possession. Aided and abetted by Crane. Now Bridges. Dean. Crooks willing to go on a run. Lee Crooks, very popular young favourite here. He's only 19 years of age. And uh, got a lot to offer this game of rugby league as Lee Crooks, who's in possession once more. Great cheers going up all around there. Now the touch judge on this side is on the field, and not surprising, punches being thrown left, right, and centre. Again, Boyd was in the middle of it, and so was Lee Brooks. And the touch judge immediately came to intervene. The referee was on the spot. That's the third time there has been fighting of that sort in the opening minutes of this game. And after only ten minutes of this game. Lee Crooks is going to have a talking to with Les Boyd. And how many times on this tour have we seen Le Les Boyd getting the lashing of a referee's tongue? Max Krilich has been called up as well. Really would be very irresponsible of Boyd if he was to get uh, sent off here. Just four days before the second test. Booing all around. The fact that uh, all 26 players are still on the park. And after 10 minutes, this would you believe the first scrum of the match. And uh, it goes to hold this time. Scrum wheeling round. So we still haven't had a satisfactory scrum. Tap as he's known, Paul Prenderville cracks it into the crowd. Gets the original ball back from the crowd. Honest lads here in Hull. The fans of the early birds, as they're known. And a crunching tackle by Rod Reddy. Oof! And a fist flung, touch judges on again. Tempers very, very frayed indeed, and that was Paul Rose just swinging an arm at Rod Reddy, who'd made the tackle on him. And what is Mr. Holdsworth going to do about it? He's going to give a penalty to Australia. Well, that was fairly obvious. Nothing more. He nearly points the finger at Rose. We're trying to get that ball out to Grove. Al Meninga, who's uh, in possession at the moment, it never quite got as far as Eric Grove. There's a roar of expectancy goes up whenever either of those two plays. Has it? Nice work. Good play by Proctor. Once more, the touch judge is on, and this is getting quite ludicrous. We've had barely 11 minutes of this game. That's five times the touch judges have been called onto the pitch. And uh, Mr Holdsworth from Leeds is going to have a real job on his hands here tonight. It all happened while Peter Sterling was trying to wriggle free there. And again, Mr. Holsworth pulls over Mick Crane, points to him, stiff arm, he says. Beware, penalty kick. So Hull conceding their third penalty. And, uh, just inside the Australian half, so Greg Brent will gain useful ground. It's certainly taking longer in this match for the Australians to find their rhythm than it has in any of the others. Good tackle once more that time on prop forward Boyd. And here they go again. <laughs> I wouldn't 
I wouldn't put any Amer Australian dollars on Les Boyd staying on for the duration. Sterling. Ray Price trying to uh, duck through a tackle. Not really successfully, not gained much ground so far, but they might now with McKay, Pierce, strong running man, Wayne Pierce, and he's got the ball through. But uh, again, it didn't come out as far as the Australians would have liked. Good spot tackling. Now it might. Young, Meninga, he's still got possession, and ooh, he was trying to uh, snap it away to Kerry Boosted. Five tackles. As Boosted will play the ball back. Sterling's looking for it and gets it. A little kick through, oh, it could be a good one, oh it hits the foot of the post and it's a whole play that falls on it. I think if that ball had missed the post there must have been a try on the cards for loose forward Ray Price who was just waiting in anticipation. As it turned out, Hull got their possession. And Dean tries to uh, do a little shimmy down the middle, makes valuable ground. Bridges to Harrison. Harris has done well to gain some more valuable ground and a penalty against Craig Young. The game littered with penalties. We've had 12, I think we've been playing about 14 or 15 minutes, so that really is uh, an indication of the way the game has been fought. And there it is, 15 minutes gone. Hull in possession, no points on the board. The Australian lineup looking most formidable. Craig Young wasn't going to let uh, Mick Crane get anywhere then, that's for sure. Paul Rose that time has uh, done some fine. Paul Rose. He and Crane have been particularly impressive. I thought Rose had been hurt there. He looks to be struggling to get to his feet. Oh dear, and William Price and Rose now involved in a real slamming match and the penalty has been given to the Australians and the crowd behind me going positively wild at the moment and it is very very nasty out there there's a gentle little pat from Kerry Booster to fullback Campbell the sort that was given to Terry Alderton uh, in the Alderman the uh, cricket test in Perth the referee no question about it, saw what happened between Price and Rose and did nothing. And out right under his nose. Looks like a cauldron out here. And uh, one can only uh, wonder why nobody's got sent off. Sterling has got Kenny. Is this the first try? It must surely be for Steve Rogers. Forward pass is given. Well, the handling was good between Sterling and then Reddy. And finally, Steve Rogers was darting in behind the post, but it was from a forward pass. So, still, we await the first points of the night. And it's holes put into the scrum. Comes out on the whole side, too. I don't think that ball ever went in the scrum, but the referee didn't seem to mind. There, an interception there too. Dean, Brooks. Nice little run once more by uh, his forward Crane. Topless almost finding a gap. Such a wily footballer, David Topless, who's enjoying uh, some of the Indian summer here with Hull, having less weight to continue to a couple of seasons ago. A towering kick, which Brentwell will collect without the slightest problem. He's got it away to Growth, who's in full stride, and look at Eric Growth go. He made 40 yards then, and only a slip stopped him going any further. Tremendous sight in full flight. supporters trying to rally their side they know that uh, they've been called on to defend very very hard at the moment and the ball was knocked uh, forward and it's going to be a scrum down it 
So if we recall that uh, Hull have just won a scrum, I think that's the only one that's been won cleanly in this match so far. This time it's coming out on the Australian side and Sterling is trying to make a dart for the line. He's not going to be able to get the ball away though. And Tony Dean has snapped it from him as well. Good play that by Dean. Nothing illegal about that. <laughs> He's got a cheeky grin on his face as he comes up to confront Sterling as well and says, there you are, cover, I'll get it from you. Crane, it's more making a solid sort of burst down the middle. Getting good ground. Well, Dean and they're coming up quickly the whole forwards. Crooks there. And I think Lee Crooks will be enjoying this game more than he did his first taste of the Australians, which was in the first test match for Great Britain. His first test, of course, too. Oh, the sprightly little Dean trying to get the ball away to Ahara, and the ball rolls harmlessly into touch. So exactly halfway through the first half, and no points on the board. And that uh, is a welcome sight for all British Rugby League followers. But the Aussies, as we've said so many times, around about this uh, time in a game, often make their mark on it. Ray Price going in with a final shove into that scrum. Mr Holdsworth having a bit of a job on to control it. And he's still not happy with it. Happily, tempers seem to have just cooled slightly. That might have taken a bit of the stick out of the game, of course. And the referee's happy, the ball is out on the whole side, and the whole crowd are happy too. And the first run there was uh, by Wayne Proctor. The second one by Crane, he's a real glutton for work tonight, Topless making a good break, getting the ball inside to Steve Evans, he's got tremendous pace, what a roar will go up here if they can get it through, it must have been knocked over. Steve Evans showing great pace then, the touch stretches on once more and the penalty has been given against the Australians. It was Greg Fredmill who committed the offence which leads to the penalty. What a marvellous run that was by Steve Evans as he got the ball back inside to Dane Ahara. Ahara was illegally tackled by Brentwell. So it's a penalty and a real chance for Hull to put their first points of the night on the board. Indeed, the first points of the game. receiving some attention taken and hold it over the Australian 25 Bridges Dean great roar going up there as Paul Rose came into the thick of things and we're looking for the real Pac-Man Green and Kaney almost made it Sterling just grabbed the ankle Dean is uh, having a great influence on this game, scurrying through a gap. Falling before Craig Young. Plays it to himself, goes for the drop. And still gets possession back, six more tackles. That worked well, even if he didn't register a point. Now then, what can Hull conjure up here? They're trying to work the ball across. It was Crane in there. Proctor went looking for it then. Meninga tried to steal the ball and couldn't. So it's still Holt. Throwing everything forward into the gap. Oh, the pick up. It's a small idea, not forward. Not only that, it was a forward pass and just about everything else as well. Well, the crowd enjoyed that. They could hear them singing. atmosphere here, no doubt about that at the Boulevard, it does evoke atmosphere. And the Aussies finding this as tough a test as they've had on the tour. It's out to Australia. Good scrum half play by Sterling, falling on that ball quickly. Well, the scrums are two apiece at this moment, oh, the ball back and so uh, 
Kenny it is who has to retrieve the situation for Australia. Can't get rid of the ball either, he couldn't release it. Rod Reddy making good ground. Reddy, if anybody, is one of those players who uh, might find his test place in some jeopardy this weekend. Paul McCabe and John Muggleton pressing hard for a spot. Well, how on earth anybody can think of changing a team which has won the first test by 40 points to four? Must be something of a mystery. Frank Stanton has admitted, though, that everybody is playing for a place on this tour. So, on the halfway line, Australia. Growth, here he goes again. Again, he goes like a bull, and it takes a bull-like tackle to get him down. Sterling trying to work it with Young, almost gets through in the gap. Krilic comes up and left good support, so did Boyd. Legs going a bit there, and Boyd has got a real hot head, tussling it, and he's left his opponent down on the ground. And now an interception! Second time in three or four minutes, commits the offence. Penalty kick, which Prenderville will tuck into touch. Crooks, who got injured, is back up again on his feet. So he's all right, he's just telling the really tough this one. I think he might be angry a bit. I'll go for Les Boyd in a minute. Something we're going to have to watch out for. Rose. Storming in. Good performance this by Hull, spirited, Harrison. Two men round his neck, he's not going to get very far. And they're building it nicely, there's Lulawai, one of the Australians. James Lulawai has become a firm favourite here with the Hull fans. There's Proctor showing some appetite there. Trying to work the ball through a high kick from Crooks. It could be a really testing one too for Brent Miller. Takes it as cool as a cucumber. He's forced to move his own line. He's just to drop out under the post. So Australia being made to defend. And the crowd considerably encouraged by the whole performance. These first 25 minutes. Not a really good kick by Rogers either. It's gone straight to Steve Evans, who's trying to set up a good attacking position here. Topper's trying to work things with Crane. They've lost the ball. It's coming right through. Can Prenderville get into the corner? He might well do. Prenderville almost making it, trying to squirm his way in at the corner. The supporters behind me were shrieking their heads off, and uh, it was almost impossible to see whether he was going to make it or not, he didn't. And Prenderville has picked up something of a knock there, but that the closest that either side has really come to a try apart from that disallowed effort from Steve Rogers. So it was all uh, a little bit frantic out there. Eight minutes of this game are gone, and here's Lee Crooks. Two points. No in front. So the penalty that was given away there. That's an attempted try from Prenderville. It was holding the start they wanted. Good take by Gary Campbell. Good run too. This is much brighter.
Proctor was trying to get the ball back inside then to Prenderville. And Topless Brooks driving down the middle. Ready and Young taking him. And Hull having a really inspired spell at the moment. Oof, that was an inspired tackle too. By Meninga. Two of the Hull supporters will see no more of this match. They've just been passed over my head to the hands of the constabulary. And let's ball back scrambling. So with nine minutes to go to half time, the touring team find themselves behind. And I wonder, is it possible that the unbeatables can be beaten? out on the whole side, oh the bit of mishandling by McCrane oh, picked up again there and Mr Holdrick after some considerable thought deciding that it was indeed a knock on scrum wheeling round like a demented octopus oh the referee saying nothing wrong with that scrum either Evans has covered midfield to go the other way and fool his Marcus Sterling, it didn't come off. But this is very promising from Holt. English cup holders looking good at the moment. Topless. Oh, and Proctor's making a big gallop. Merlewey back inside and didn't quite run right. The team has managed to keep possession for Holt. Crane has had an excellent first half looking for Proctor he falls under the challenge of Rob Reddy and, uh, a little bit of uh, verbals going on between Crooks and Reddy I didn't really see anything wrong with his all Ooh, that ball almost lost there and in fact it's on the ground and it's a scrum down. Australian put in, Peter Sterling is clinging onto the ball for the moment until he's satisfied and the referee is satisfied, it's out again to Hull, Bridges has done a manful job in the scrums, it's an enterprising attacking play down that far side of the field, it's all come to naught now, and as Evans gave what turned out to be a loose pass and the ball is back in the Australian's hands with Meninga. Touch judges back on. Thankfully, we haven't seen much of the touch judges recently, but uh, one of them's on the pitch again now. Mr. Holdsworth seems to be ignoring him. Go away, he says. Oh, and how close was Brentwell to getting through that gap? Krillich is through one. But the Australians haven't had to wait so long for a try as they have in this match. They do have a penalty kick. And at long last, the touch judge is going to be listened to. Probably gone to ask the ref what time it is. And the penalty is now given to Australia. And then Max Krillich is saying plunk it between the posts now. He's telling Meninga he wants to kick it and get the touring team back on level paper. I don't think the referee could even hear Meninga then, even though he was standing right next to him. The obligatory sand. A very necessary white ball. And the boot of Meninga here, trying to combine to get Australia back into this game. Just six minutes to go to the half-time whistle. Hull leading 2-0, but for how long? Meninga so thoughtful about this kick. It's 
tries it up here, it's a pretty long one, and has he got it? He's got the distance again, he's just slid it wide. I can't have missed by more than a few inches there. But miss it did. So the gamble didn't pay off. Hull still have their noses in front. Five minutes of the first half to go then. Collected by Reddy. Let's turn it back inside to Meninga, who'll try and make up for that lapse by getting a try. It took so much getting down then. Big, strong man, Mal Meninga. Policeman, of course, back home. Now Ray Price has had a fairly quiet first half, but has got through a couple of tackles there. Sterling, have they got the skill? I know they've got the speed, but they didn't quite work it as well as they would have liked. Rogers has made a very spirited run down the middle, though. Now Krilic has got a real captain's job to play here. Pierce coming through on the burst. Boyd now running well. Very good run from Les Boyd. Sterling, Price again going for the gap. These important closing minutes of the first half for Hull. They feel so much happier going into their dressing room two points ahead than they would three points down, which is exactly what Australia are trying to conjure up now. They're ready, he's got the ball back inside for Krilic, good tackle though. Sterling, and Young trying to turn it back inside to Pierce. And it's going to be an obstruction. And, uh, Penalty kick given, yes, I thought there was an obstruction there on the Australian side as they were trying to work something out. So, Steve Evans has picked up something of a knock there. Hull substitutes this evening, Barry Banks, who can play either full-back or stand-off half, and Mick Sutton, the back forward. Trenderville. Finds a very good touch, very, very good touch indeed. It's carried play well inside the Australian half. And we'll all be listening out for the hooter. Not long of this first half remaining. But, uh, long enough for somebody to register a try, and it's Hull who've got the ball. Price and Crane, the respective number 13s there. And Crane on the side's done well. Now then, can hold it a try. The full back, back inside to right wing O'Hara. Oh, so where is he? Oh, so, so close, Dane O'Hara. Fine run by the full back, Kemble. And hold really throwing this ball around. Bridges has done well. Dean gets it out now to Evans. Back inside for Luluai. Ducks inside one and two tackles. Australian defence holds firm for the time being, it's back to six tackles as well. They're besieged at the moment as they swing the ball far wide right. He must pick this one up, and he does. Gets through a tackle two, gets through two. O'Hara going for the line again. Spirited play this from the whole three quarters. And Dean and Topless really orchestrating everything at the moment. As Rose goes plunging in and is tackled by Sterling. The Aussies won't want to concede a try before half time. Brooks is coming into the action. Oh, the ball lost momentarily. Regained, but it's going to be a strong there. Steve Evans, who will have been keen to impress the great Britain selectors, having been dropped after the first test when he played, of course, on the left wing. He's unfortunately dropped a couple of passes there. He has made one very telling run in this first half. So a crucial scrum if Bridges can win this one for Hull. Well, it could have been something on the cards. As it is, he's going to get another chance anyway. Another scrum down. Can Bridges win the ball for Hull? I'm sure that was feeding. No doubt about that. That ball was put almost into the second row. Hull have a penalty. Oh, again, let's not done this time by O'Hara. Possession lost. And we're inside the last 60 seconds of this first half. With Hull leading by two points to nil. 
And you can imagine they'll get a rousing reception if that's the way it is as they go off for their half-time oranges. Or even something stronger, I would think, in the Australian dressing room. They might need it. Here they come, topless. He's got the ball through for Lulawai. Lulawai might get there himself. Rendeville's the man immediately behind him. What a dramatic finish we could have to the first half. Brooks goes driving in. The tackle by Pierce is a good one. Reddy's there too. Into the gap goes Harrison. Trying to slither over. Still a few yards to go to the line. But Hull really willing to fling this ball about. Brooks once more can pull back Kendall. The Australian tackling there exemplary. Still Hull driving at the line. The little chip through. He's there! second half and what uh, a remarkable first 40 minutes we've had Hull registering that try through David Topless right on half time and that guarantees that we're in for a thrilling second 40 minutes of this game Hull's turn to kick off which means that uh, the Australian possession first with Kerry boosted Uh, not allowing him to get up easily. Krilic spotted a gap and went on the wrong side there. That fooled him for a moment or two. Now he plays it to himself. So a good start by the Australian captain who's got a job on here to raise the morale of his side. Uh, not used to being beaten. So they're not used to being behind. And Hull get the ball. Good quick thinking there. But it certainly wasn't good work by Wayne Pierce. Allowing Mick Crane to get in ahead of him. Bridges, floating that ball out to Dean, the crowd chanting, attack, 
attack, attack, and that's just what Hull are doing. Good play once more by Crane, who's done as well as anybody in this whole pack. He really has had an outstanding game as Mick Crane. Topless the try scorer. The kick by Crooks, another towering kick. Uh, well taken once more by Greg Redmond. He really is as good as anybody in the world in that situation. Fights off one marker. Growth had used his considerable power coming inside there. So there'll be nobody out on the wing if Price can get the ball clear. Held in the tackle. Has to play the ball after that challenge from Crooks. And now trying to work something through Rod Reddy. He's held back a few yards. Penalty there. The whole player, McCarris, never really retreated at that play the ball. And concedes the penalty kick. Brentnell finding a safe enough touch and Growth sets off so happy to take people on Eric Growth and slithered inside there to make a bit of ground Krillich coming through on the burst with Pierce and he was coming through strongly which made that tackle from Crane all the more admirable assisted by Crooks now Sterling has had his hardest game of this tour Brentnell's come up in the line to help out now Ray Pierce driving down the middle imperative for Hull to hold the Australians as long as they can without conceding anything in this match a little bit scruffy out there at the moment uh, Sterling tries to bring some semblance of order to it now Reddy's gone well Good running and Brett Kenny. Oh, the pass wasn't a good one. It was too far behind Meninga, too far ahead of Rogers, but he's still got possession. Steve Rogers showing what a good centre is and getting the pass into Peter Sterling. Sterling got two tries at Hull Kingston Rovers. If he can get his man in here for Australia, as he has indeed, and Boosted has got the try. And that all stemmed from the play by Peter Sterling. First of all, Rod Reddy charging in, then Peter Sterling carrying it on. And the pass in the end was a good one. And Kerry Booster goes in at the corner for his seventh try of the tour. And uh, well, it was greeted in almost total silence was that try, which uh, there was a moment's hesitation, I'm sure, in my voice as I tried to peer over there and see Booster going over in the corner. But the crowd was absolutely stunned by that. And that's just what Hull didn't want at the start of this second half. So the Australians registering their first points in the game. And obviously a very difficult kick for Meninga to negotiate. He's had the distance with both his previous attempts at goal tonight, but he's not had the direction. Let's see if he can get both here. Constant whistling around the ground, trying to put Mal I don't think that will worry him too much. And that looks a much better kick, but it's no, it's drifted wide in front of the posts. So Maninga still to notch up his first points tonight. And at the Boulevard, it's whole seven, Australia three, and we still have something of a match on our hands. That the encouragement that the Australians needed in these opening minutes of the second half. Over on the far side of the field, Barry Banks, the whole back substitute, is just going through his uh, exercises, which suggests perhaps he might be coming on. But for the moment, Australia have the possession, and they're looking willing and eager, and Pierce running through, almost getting into the gap. He has to uh, keep possession himself. Wayne Pierce, distinctive with that white headband. And Krilic, good play by the Australian captain. Krilic has had a very good start to the second half. Sterling, now Price, just trying to struggle free and release the ball. 
the Australians somehow have brought some real pep and urgency into their second half play here's Les Boyd and this is a vastly improved Australian side to the one which went into the dressing room so Frank Stanton's talk has obviously worked wonders Pierce falling to a good challenge from Dana Hara six tackles but that the best concerted spell we've seen from the Kangaroos They still trail 7-3 though. And well, it's out on the Australian side for Sterling. It goes round the blind side. And the penalty given there against Ray Price. <laughs> Even John Holds is having a go. They're trying to separate bodies there. And oh dearie me, just as we had at the start of the first half. Tempers very, very hot. Krilic once more being called over, cool it down he says, that's uh, the referee saying that. It's Peter Sterling originally, and then Ray Price who got involved. And even Peter Sterling's just having a bit of a go at Price there and saying, look, for goodness sake, don't lose your rag in this sort of uh, atmosphere, we could get beaten. Vanderville finds his touch all right. And Regis sets us off again. Poor Rose. There's Boyd and Reddy going in hard. Fairly on that occasion. Now Harrison is asked to do the running. Always makes five or six yards with Harrison. A colossal bulk of his. Boards have put in an impressive stint of work here tonight. Lolo has got it the way to Dean. Prendeville. Oh, we've not had many running chances for Prendeville. Five tackles gone. Look, did well to get the ball away. Crooks will put in another kick. Well, it might be a very, very good kick. It is indeed. What a good kick that was for young Crooks. He screwed the ball back almost over his head and found a touch which even he, I don't think, anticipated. The scrum is formed, the ball is in it. It's out on the whole side, great cheering going up. So a real chance here for Holland to press their claims as they try and work it around the scrum with Dean and Topless. Here's Dean again now, Crooks over to Luluai, who's a sprightly character, James Luluai. First came to this country as a member of the New Zealand touring team a couple of years ago, Crooks is put through Fielded by Brent Moore. And the tackling is done by Steve Evans. So the Australians having to drop out from under their own posts. Not a situation they seem to enjoy. Steve Rogers made a bit of a hash of it the last time uh, he was called upon. Let's see what he can do now. Oh, again, it's not a good kick. In fact, it struck the referee. But he'll have the possession all right. And Harrison. Looking for Topless once more. Rose it was then coming into it. Topless here again, the try scorer. And Bridges to play the ball. And they've got plenty of men out on this right hand side as Lula I go screaming for it. Kendall tries to get in. No hard is there now. Good tackling. Ball was not grounded properly. Penalty to Australia. The whole really throwing everything at the Aussies. And this, without question, the hardest match the tourists have had. 
Perhaps the Northern started it off a week or two ago with a good performance against them. Fulham also played quite well. And now Hull are really giving them a test. Which is the best thing that they could have asked for, of course, four days before the test match. Grilich always lost the ball. And Van Hull yet get something out of it. Australia's really lost the ball needlessly on a couple of occasions in this half. Brooks driving forward. Bridges, Nadine. We'll try and get it out to, to people like Luloi and Evans and Kemble who always look dangerous. Particularly Luloi and Kemble. The kick through by Rose. Again Brent now has to go dashing back for it. Fields it safely. Oh, and runs clear well. Oh, what a good piece of play by Greg Brentner. That looked a full pass. And if we saw it too. But well played, Greg Brentner there. He was under the cosh in that corner, and he wriggled free and made very good ground. Sign of a great fullback. Right? Topless had a change of shorts, perhaps to bring him extra luck. He's whiter than white at the moment, unlike the rest of them out there. It's out on the whole side again, and Topless has just got his shorts dirty. And the Australians have the ball. It was uh, Kenny who was up quickly to get possession for Australia. He's had a quiet match, really, as Brett Kenny. But he was uh, seen to good evidence then, ready sport one tackle off. No, he hasn't. Stuck at it well then, did Crooks. Aided by Lulu I Sterling, there could well be a big gap here if Pierce can get the ball away as he does to Meninga, who's off down that touchline and tackle from Campbell, he's got the ball back inside though to Crow. That was brilliant football by the Australians. First of all by Sterling, then by Meninga doing the touchline and finally by Eric Groat who got the touchdown. Groat's fifth try and what a fine one it was. So much to admire there. Meninga's powerful running, a good tackle by Campbell, which stopped him going all the way. But then the ball turned inside by Meninga, and Eric Grove gets the try. So 14 minutes of this second half gone, and the Australians have registered two tries in those 14 minutes. But they're still a point behind, unless Meninga can. Well, he's left it to Steve Rogers, actually, unless Steve Rogers can tack on the goal points here. Meninga had taken plenty out of himself then. <laughs> One of the whole players is being escorted off the pitch out on the far side. I think it's James Luluai who's going off. There's Luluai going off, so Barry Banks will uh, come on for Hull. All that's happening while Steve Rogers tries to compose himself and knows the Australians in front. Not an easy kick by any means, and it's drifted across the face of the posts, so Hull still have the lead, 7-6. Well, on Sunday at Fulham, Harry Edgar was making the point that uh, goal-kicking is not the strongest part of this Australian side, and that's the way it's been seen again tonight. Because they've yet to land at anything between the sticks. Meninga's missed three times and Rogers has missed once. And they have got two tries to one. Oh, what good play by Beasted. Krilic ready to marshal the forces again. As he's done expertly in this second half to get the Aussies going again. They really did experience their worst 40 minutes of this tour in the first half. Now Pierce collared by Topless. Good tackle that from the Holt skipper. Sterling has got it through again. Meninga's off on another charge down the touchline. Kicks ahead himself. He's now in a dash with Kemble. 
and Kemble's there and did well. But once more, Meninga touchline, and the Australians suddenly seem to be bringing their experience to bear and are having a much happier second half than they did at first. And Hull still lead. Scrum down in a dangerous position for Hull. Keith Bridges has done so well in the scrums. They need him to be at his best here. It's a Hull put in. in and out and the referee's unhappy so down they go again and who's going to get it it's out on the whole side much to the delight of the early bird supporters Dean bringing Crooks into it Crooks uh, had quite a battling performance there for Hull. Harrison not getting very far on that occasion. And the Australians will be delighted to keep Hull in their own half at the moment and keep up this attack, which has brought them those two tries. And indeed, they've gone close on another couple of occasions recently. But Dean makes a good clearing kick. It's going to fall right this time, though, for Boosted, who comes inside. So quick and elusive, and he's got the ball away too in the tackle. It's Kenny with it now. Trying to uh, drag his way almost up to the 25. And Meninga has uh, moved over there to help out. The referee holds it, just watching that uh, nobody's straying offside on the whole side. I think there's only been one offside in the whole game. PS always oh, got through the gap. I thought he had Rogers. Brent will come up, Rogers instead gets it away and Krilic picks it up, the ball was not back. So Australia retained possession, but that wasn't the slickest handling they've shown on this tour. Sterling, oh, and through the gap, what a tremendous run by Rod Reddy. Very, very good with Sterling making the dummy run. Australia undoubtedly going for their third try as Sterling so elusive gets the ball back inside for Brent Newell who's as close to the line as it's possible to be without scoring the hand is up for five tackles so can the Australians conjure something up from this play the ball he's there I think <laughs> well under a mass of bodies no he's not uh, it was as close as they could get good try that uh, again scrum half Sterling showing just how effective he is came here as uh, the second choice really to Steve Mortimer but has played so well that he's made the test position his own it's out on the whole side again but uh, the ball must go back in right underneath the posts and the crowd holding its breath as one Hull leading in the scrums 9-3 so uh, you can sense just what sort of a good job Keith Bridges has done that was uh, very very messy indeed and it was right under the sticks and a few people were holding their, uh, their breath then so the dropout under the post well, it's a better one than Steve Rogers managed to effect the ball knocked back by Wayne Pierce did the bounce badly for him and now Eric Grove has it ball was not back there was some, some hesitation in the minds of the Australians then about whether they'd be offside if they played it Boyd turns inside one tackle not get to very far though Proctor clinging on to him hello hello Boyd is there again with a little punch and I think Harrison might well have been trying to fool the referee and a gap opening it was Boyd going through it once more Midway inside the second half, Hull still lead by a point, but Krilic is coming forward and driving these Australians. Ray Price in possession at the moment. But it's still 7-6 to Hull, as Kenny gets into the action and does well to hold on to that ball, actually. And Evans also clinging on to him, and he's still got it, so uh, Australians might yet get something here. And the ball will be flung about all over the place as Pierce gets in, Five tackles gone. 
and they'd love to get a third try and actually edge in front Young now driving for the line back inside for Sterling and now for Kenny flings it out wide Meninga it's picked up by Boosted who's charging over and Boosted tremendous run that by the winger who got the first try and got Australia back into this match and he really is so quick another scrum down right on the whole try line Billy Boosted has picked up something of a knock there in trying to get that uh, third Australian try which will cause uh, a little bit of concern the Australian trainer coming out uh, just to see what the matter is it's all good to see uh, my friend Mr Richards on about his what, fifth or sixth trip I believe to uh, Great Britain anyway the scrum is formed once more Hull's put in with Tony Dean and the Australians really pushing Hull back at the moment and it's out for Australia but in fact it came out on the Australian side but Hull managed to get the possession gone quiet in these last few minutes as they sense that Australia were really driving their way back into this game but it shouldn't be forgotten that Hull lead by a point and the crowd giving them good vocal support Bridges good running once more by Mick Crane Crane for me has been the outstanding figure in this whole side on the topless or well taken by Booster. What a good footballer Kerry Booster is, and sprightly as well. Pinned this time by Prendeville. He's not seen a great deal of the action, but what he's done, he's done well. Two tackles gone, four to go. As Price takes it up, tries to make good ground and does so. He got the ball away to Rogers, who lost it. And he knocked it forward and then didn't allow Evans to pick up. So it's a scrum down. But if Steve Rogers had collected that pass from Ray Price, he would have had a fair chance of going all the way to the line. And Tony Dean was quick to get uh, back into the thick of it, but it's a penalty to Australia. And Nick Harrison's kicking the ball away very foolishly indeed, conceding a needless penalty. They can ill afford to do silly things like that, Hull. In fact, it's an interesting statistic. There have been 14 penalties against Hull. Not surprisingly, Mal Meninga is going to have a pot shot at goal because Australia know they're in a real fight here and if he can land this one, then for the first time in this game, Australia will have their noses in front. Meninga has been unsuccessful so far tonight. First time he's played in a match and not kicked a goal. And he's had a very consistent tour indeed. Scoring five tries and landing 34 goals for a tally of 83 points. I wonder, can he make it 85? Again, the constant banging around the ground. Trying to put Meninga off. We'll soon know when we watch the touch judges' flags. There's the kick, it's flat. Oh, and it's through. But how lucky, and that may be a signal the change of fortunes that Australia needed. The ball canning in, in off and upright. And Meninga just discussing it with the referee. So Meninga at long last gets it, his name on the score sheet with that penalty kick. And Hull have got a good possession with Topless. Now then, I wonder can Hull get back in front. Brooks. A race for the loose ball, but Brentwell has it. So the little kick through not working out that time for Hull. So they've really given a good account of themselves. 
Mark will be eager not to concede a try now as Growth sets off and tries to bring some respite to the Australian defence. He's as good as anybody for doing that. Oh, well done by Sterling again. Such an elusive character. Look how far he managed to get then with two players hanging on round his neck, which is a testimony to his strength and fitness. The whole player is down on the far side of the field. It's topless. So he's out of the action for the moment, and the second he gets up, he's back in it. Knock on. Still everything to play for in this game. Pole, seven, Australia, eight. Penalty to Hull. Great roar going up. As referee holds it, made the signal. And Paul Prenderville's being asked to come over. And put this one into touch. And what a good touch Prenderville finds there. I think the crowd thought for a moment that it uh, was going to be caught. But it was a very good touch for Hull to find. Bridges, the long, long ball back. And the muddy number on the back of that shirt. There's 10, which signifies Paul Rose. No crooks. Dean's come much further forward. He'll try and conjure something up. He couldn't quite get the ball away in the tackle. But this is really sprightly. A lively game Hull have played. And they've really shown that these Australians can be beaten, even if they do trail by a single point at the moment. They're not invincible. Oh, Evans has lost it, got it back. Also, they knocked it back as well. Five tackles gone, and Crooks is down, and that's going to be six. And another substitution is about to be made. The huge number one has gone up, which signals that the Australian fullback Greg Brentnell is coming off. So the scrub is down. Comes out on the Australian side. The referee was entirely happy about the way that ball was put in. Lewis waiting to get into the thick of things as a replacement for Brentnell. We can't do so until all this is sorted out after this scrum. And a penalty to hold. Feeding at the scrum. They've taken it quickly. The Australians can't make their substitution. Kemble has brought down one tackle. Topless, the architect getting through the gap, and Topless, scorer of Hulse try right on half time, taking his team close again. And of course, it's a very fair ploy for Hull at the moment to be thinking of a drop goal, which would get them back level at eight all. I think Dean was thinking about it too then, and the end decided against, and they've still got the ball. Topless wondering which way to go, and there is the drop goal. But it's missed, it's wide of the target from the Crooks. Well, Australia is still determined to make that substitution, which they can now do, I think. Wally Lewis, at long last, gets the chance to come on. And it's Greg Brentnell who's going off. It'll be interesting to see if he's picked up anything of a knock there, which here might make him doubtful for the test. Anyway, Brentnell is off and Lewis is on. So there are only 10 minutes of this game remaining, Australia leading by a point. And they do look so strong when they get moving, as they are doing now with Pierce. And now Sterling, and if it comes over this side, Price is looking to get the ball away for Rodgers. Didn't come. Oh, good play once more by Reddy, who's had an excellent second half, Krilic into the gap, fighting them off, he 
bustled two of the whole defenders away from him there as though they didn't exist. Krilich too has had a good second half. Uh, Reddy is very willing to work in this uh, second half too. Lewis for the first time. Oh, and it might be a good tactical substitution as well. A pair of fresh legs in the last ten minutes. Always a help, of course. And here they come looking, and Sterling's turned inside. He's still going. Brought down now. Five tackles gone. And Reddy once more trying to get down the middle, and he's collared under the posts. Six tackles, so the whole defence holding good. Still, we've got a, a real match on here, with just one point separating these sides. And the crowd, and it's a big one, has had its money's worth. Both trainers have been on and off the pitch in the last few seconds. But, uh, all the repairs seem to have been carried out satisfactorily. And the ball is out. Ooh, wasn't sure which side it was going to come out on then. Came out to a whole player, Proctor, but... Uh, the referee's not happy, it's another scrum down. Max Krilich would dearly love to win this one, I think he'd almost give up his tour money. They get the ball out now. And the foot didn't need to do, a penalty has been given against Australia. <laughs> Tony Dean kidded everybody. The referee's making some splendid signs. The trainers are back on. And Hull can breathe again. More, it was a stupid penalty to give away for Australia in that position. Prenderville's found a touch impeccably this evening. So the Australian defence being called on once more. Not long left in this game for Hull to get back in front, but they'll give it absolutely everything. There's a Rose going in, now Crane. Harrison, making very good ground again, McHarrison. To say he's uh, not been a regular in the side this season, he's done a, a manful job. Topless, back inside for Evans. And the crowd singing once more, trying to get Hull going. They know that the line can be beaten, and they've lost the ball. That ball snaffled there by Mal Meninga hello hello Meninga plays it to himself barges off two men still going Meninga and the strength of an ox he made uh, 10 or 15 yards then now Price and Australia's really looking to seal this match now as Pierce gets going Pierce not had the running chances tonight that he's had in previous games Sterling Sterling's had a superb second half, he really has. And I think he'll cling on to his test place all right, despite Mortimer's claims. Now Krilic back inside for Reddy, and Reddy still going. He's been superb too. Rogers has Growth outside him. Can Rogers get in with his brute strength? He can. Eric Growth and the Australians leap in the air. They know that that could well have sealed it. Growth, or growth is so, so strong that he honestly swaps people off like flies and there is virtually no stopping him in full flight. It's his second try and that surely is going to clinch the Australians victory and keep their unbeaten record intact. With just six minutes to go, the Australians fling their arms open and acknowledge the few cheering supporters in the crowd because it looks as though they're going to break all records. they do indeed win this match it will be their 12th victory in succession and that will be enough to make this the most successful ever kangaroo start to a tour 74 minutes gone and Eric Groth's second try of the night is sixth of the tour surely looks to have clinched matters now for the kangaroos but what a battle they've had Meninga's kick to come. 
and this time it looks plumb. That is a superb kick from Beninga. Pressure's off. Australia lead at 13-7, and that surely is going to be enough. But don't they know they've been in a scrap? Well, the whole will have a right to feel disappointed. They've given absolutely everything. Nobody could have asked any more. And people like Rose and Crane have battled, and another substitution has been made with Mick Sutton coming into the battle. He's, uh, it's just been announced, by the way, that Mick Crane is Hull's man of the match, and I'm not at all surprised at that, because he really has had a valiant performance, Crane. The ball's been knocked back and Hull trying to conjure up another try with Pierce. Three second half tries then, two from Grove and one from Boosted. And uh, I think it's asking too much of Hull now to get back in front. Sterling and ready and they're through that gap once more and they're running so strongly now Australia as they come back inside. Boosted. Seems to record from the knock he took. Pierce. See the legs flailing there as he tries to uh, wriggle from the ground. Boyd. Avoiding one crunching tackle. Falling to the second one. Five tackles. Just four minutes to go, plus a little bit of injury time that we've had. As Sterling tries to go darting down the middle, he weaved this way and that, and in the end fell to a tackle around the neck, in which substitute Sutton was involved. So it's a scrum down. But somehow the atmosphere seems to have been quietened here for so long in this game. The crowd really felt as though a shock might be on the cards and that Hull might take away that Australian record. It's not going to happen now. But uh, they can be proud of their side, all right, which is fought all the way. Now, well, once that pile of bodies gets up, we'll find out who's got the ball. Tony Dean's got it, makes a spirited run. So, a last final fling from Hull, perhaps. Crooks. That was Rose. Oh, and that ball going down, knocking it forward. So that takes a bit of the heat off Australia once more. But I think it's fair to say that at half time in the dressing room there must have been a few words swapped. Uh, Australia trailing then by seven points really had to do something to claw their way back into this match, and that's exactly what they've done with those three tries. So they've sh shown commendable spirit really to fight off everything that Hull have thrown at them. Two minutes to go, Hull have got the ball from the scrum. It's not coming out cleanly, but uh, they definitely had the possession. Referee's wondering where on earth to go. In the end, he does edge around on the Australian side, and Hull can play the ball. With Sutton, oh, dearie me, lost it straight away, and there must be a chance here as Lewis goes streaking down the left-hand side, gets it back inside to Meninga, swats one off, not the second. He got rid of Banks, he couldn't get rid of Campbell. Sterling flinging a long, long pass out to Kenny, and Pierce is taken out of it. Price, Sterling. Such an artful dodger, Peter Sterling. But even if they don't score again, the Australians will be delighted with the way they've come back into this match. And I think they'll leap for joy as the half-hooter goes. Price has got it back inside for Boyd. Fifth tackle, and we're moving into injury time. And there's a knock-on there without question by Boyd. competitive game as this one 
with Hull giving as good as they've got and coming again. Price is tackled and a good one. And it was on Crane who has absolutely been outstanding for Hull. Topless. We really are playing out time now. And Australia are going to maintain this record. This along with the matches at Wigan and Bradford Northern, the closest in terms of score, but it wasn't really until six minutes from time that that third try from Eric Growth clinched the victory, which is now confirmed by the sound of the hooter. Eric Growth goes off, having scored two fine second-half tries, and with one coming from the other winger, Kerry Boosted, Australia register a 13 points to seven victory but it really was a marvellous performance by Hull. Their crowd are seeing them off the pitch. And after that try from David Topless just before half-time with a couple of goals from Lee Crooks had sent Hull in leading 7-0 at half-time. Australia really had to raise their game in the second half. That was exactly what they did with those tries from growth two and boosted and a couple of goals from Meninga. So these are the most successful kangaroos ever to visit Great Britain, having won their first 12 matches of the tour. That is a new record, and in so doing, they've totted up 345 points. It really is a marvellous way for them to go into the second test at Wigan on Saturday. Once more than the final score here at the Boulevard, it's Hull 7, Australia 13.